So vulvodynia is a chronic pain disorder that's characterized by chronic vaginal and vulvar pain. Um, but women can develop pain by multiple mechanisms. And some of those mechanisms focus on the um, vaginal skin, some mechanisms are neuropathic, and some of the mechanisms are muscular. So I think it's a little bit more complex because you have to think of mul multiple mechanisms at once, but the true complexity of vulvodynia is that it involves the vagina, which is a very private organ. Uh, not, uh, it's not a disorder that women like to talk about, nor do physicians really truthfully like to talk about it. Um, we don't have many diagnostic procedures for vulvodynia. It's usually a diagnosis of exclusion. It's mostly focused on the physical exam, which uses quantitative sensory testing using a cotton tip, and really just a single digit exam. So it's a very simple and very clinically applicable diagnostic tool. We use mostly the patient history and our clinical exam findings to make the diagnosis. So there's a lot of debate about the mechanisms that can foster development and progression of vulvar pain, um, but it seems like that debate is common to all chronic pain disorders. It's mostly focused on abnormalities along central neural pathways, both in the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Um, the additional two things that we have to worry about in vulvodynia is um, chronic inflammatory abnormalities in the vaginal skin and also abnormalities in muscle contraction. So there's two little things uh, that are a little bit special about the vagina, but not unique, I think. It's, it's common to find those two f other additional factors in other disorders. So I think actually uh, there are characteristics that are common to the three um, uh, pain disorders. And this is what we're learning over time, is that these uh, pain disorders, so things like interstitial cystitis or painful bladder syndrome, um, irritable bowel syndrome, fibromyalgia, they're all, uh, they have a lot of things in common. So patients who have these disorders tend to have them all at once. And so vulvodynia is very similar to that. We notice that they have, patients who have vulvodynia are also more likely, two to three times more likely, to have additional chronic pain syndromes. Um, in, in other chronic pain syndromes, we worry about um, physical activity, quality of life, um, psychosocial influences, and those are also particular to vulvodynia, but specifically the psychosocial influences that focus on sexual function, which are a little bit more difficult to discuss and actually more difficult to study in real life. Um, so those things, I think, are shared by all the pain disorders. Um, the other thing that I find absolutely fascinating is that um, the uh, coping behavior of women who have vulvar pain is uh, very different uh, than it is in other chronic pain syndromes in that we have about 14 million women with chronic vaginal pain. Their primary complaint is painful intercourse and yet women continue to be sexually active. So there are ways that they're finding to cope with this pain that we have not yet studied, which we probably should. Um, and would help us a lot in managing pain if we could figure out what those coping mechanisms were. The prevalence range is actually anywhere between 8 to 20 percent, depending on which population you study, which means that we have about 14 million women in the United States that are living with this type of pain. But most importantly, the study shows that 50% of them are not seeking care, and they're living on average about four to five years with pain before they're actually seen by a provider. So that means that we're not screening these women well enough, and it's not difficult at all to incorporate screening for vulvovaginal pain when you are a physician is evaluating a patient for other pain disorders because we know that these pain disorders tend to live together. So if a patient is in the clinic for fibromyalgia, IBS, migraines, TMD, whatever the pain disorder is, one of the questions that should be brought eventually is, do you have pain elsewhere, specifically in your reproductive organs or pain during intercourse? And I think physicians will be very surprised to find out how many times a woman will say yes to that answer.